Hey there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Disney California Adventure has about 15 quick service dining locations inside the park where you can order a meal for about 10 to $20. No reservations required, mobile order or don't. But these are the quick service options. The places where most people will eat lunch and dinner at Disney California Adventure in 2022. We run it all down and we have fun doing it. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, Hi, this is Amy. And I'm TC. As you enter DCA and stroll down Buena Vista Street, you won't find a lot of quick service dining options where you can get a full meal. At Mortimer's Market, you can grab fruit and light snacks. And at the Clarabelle's of DCA, you can get hand-scooped ice cream as opposed to the frozen soft-serve yogurt you get at Clarabelle's in Toontown. But you have to get down to the circle before you can really grab a meal. Carthay Circle, one of the nicest table service restaurants in both parks, is back open. But the quick service lounge has not returned and the space is being used for al fresco dining at the main restaurant. This is a shame because though it operated like a quick service location and didn't require a reservation, you could get quite a few items off the really high high quality main menu. So that really just leaves the Fiddler Pfeiffer and Practical Cafe. This Starbucks location connects with Clarabelle's and Trolley Treats, and therefore it has tons of ice cream, candy, cookies, and goodies to go with your coffee. But many people don't realize that you can get breakfast sandwiches here all day. And there's a pretty good variety to choose from. And there's a bacon and Gruyere egg bites, as well as a tomato and mozzarella panini. Hollywood Land has a really awesome hot dog stand, Award Wieners. They have four classic hot dogs on the regular menu, a standard dog, a chili dog that has pepper jack and corn chips on it, and the bacon dog that comes with house-made pepper ketchup, grilled onions, peppers, and bacon crumbles. Finally, there's also a plant-based Philly dog topped with mushrooms, peppers, and onions. At $9 to $10, they come with fries or fruit. They have an Asada-flavored French fry poutine-like dish that includes salsa and guacamole in the toppings. For $10.49, it's super filling, and there's all always seasonal hot dog variations as well. Right now, you can get the Lava Dog, which is topped with pineapple chutney and pulled pork for $10.49. There's also funnel cake, so make sure you bring your appetite to award wieners. The newest land in DCA has brought a much appreciated new quick service location to the park, the Pim Test Kitchen. The Pim Test Kitchen is a really great concept, which is translated into okay food in our opinion. The Pimini at $14.49 is pretty good with provolone, ham, and salami. It has an Italian style. The the not-so-little chicken sandwich is very tasty, but you will pay a little more for it compared to other chicken sandwiches in the park at $15.49. One of the best dishes on the menu is the plant-based meatball pasta. It's pretty good for $13. And the potato rounds are the sides, and they're yummy. And the giant pretzels are delicious and cost about 12 bucks. Make sure you have someone to share these with, though, if you order one. We were less impressed with the PB3, a peanut butter and banana sandwich that was unfortunately overdone with jelly, candy, and syrup on it. but. That might be your thing. And we're also not huge fans of the colossal crouton Caesar salad. They went for a deconstructed thing, but having to then construct your own salad with plastic silverware just didn't work for us. But give it a try, you be the judge. Consider checking out the Shawarma Palace food carts too. And if there's a line in Adventures Campus, check over at the Hyperion Theater. They've been operating a second cart there too. They have chicken, or cauliflower falafel wraps that come with veggies and yogurt tahini sauce, and they're both excellent. It's very filling, $12.99, like most of Avengers Campus, it is on the pricier side compared to other quick service locations. Cars Land has it all. Three fantastic world-class attractions and incredibly themed dining locations throughout. You can make a meal out of the options at the Cozy Cone Motel. Each cone offers something different, but if you're hungry, head to the Cone Queso. For $8.99, you can get a flaky pastry cone filled with chili and cheese or a mac and cheese carbonara. This is no light snack for the money, it's a lot of food. Also, try Cone Coctions. They have a chimichanga for $6.99 that is a really good snack, though I wish they had corn on the cob to go with it. And of course, the dining headliner of the land is Flo's V8 Cafe, a wonderful nostalgic spot right out of the Cars movie and Small Town America. It has three distinctly different seating sections, each with some of the best views in Disneyland. We're at a loss as to why it's not serving breakfast, but lunch and dinner here is pretty darn good. The Cheeseburger or Impossible Burger is $12.79 like the rest in Disneyland, but comes with caramelized onions and Thousand Island dressing, so it's a nice variation on the theme. There's a tasty club sandwich, a good cob salad under $12, and fried chicken and mashed potatoes and veg that rivals the plaza for $18.99. 
Flo's has a really good variety for the kids to choose from, and I bet they're gonna want one of those super thick milkshakes too. We like the steak fries here, they're simple but solid. The Pacific Wharf is the only land at Disneyland devoted to food and theming alone. There's a little music, but eating is really all there is to do here. One of our favorite places for lunch in the park is the Pacific Wharf Cafe. It has a great menu and decent prices for what you get. This is the place at DCA to get bread bowl soups. You can get a clam chowder or potato soup or even a mac and cheese filled bread bowl for $11.50. We really like the Asian chicken or tofu salad at $11.50, and there's a shrimp roll, and I really love the classic deli sandwich with prosciutto, salami, pepperoni, pepper jack cheese, arugula, tomato, and more on sourdough with chips. It's super yummy and decent price. Also at the wharf is the Lucky Fortune Cookery. They have a chicken teriyaki and Szechuan chicken dish for $12.99 that are pretty good. A Korean beef bulgogi burrito with garlic chips that's really good and a pork ramen dish that's downright delicious, especially if you get the miso toppings. There are chicken wings, pot stickers, and an impossible banh mi sandwich that are all priced pretty reasonably. This spot is popular and it's worth a visit. Sharing the same seating as the last two is the Cocina Cucamonga Mexican Grill. It has an array of street tacos that are pretty good, though some are better than others. The chicken, pork, and steak tacos are good, but our favorite are the quesabiria tacos that come with consomme you can dip them in. The best might be the Tacos Dorados de Papa, which are potato tacos with cabbage slaw and salsa. They range from $10 to $12. Downstairs at the Lamplight Lounge, it's reservation only, but if you head to the upper level, you can access one of the nicer walk-up dining locations in the park. It is table service and a bit more expensive, but worth the splurge every now and again, and cheaper than the Lamplight's main dining room. There is a tasty menu full of delicious delicacies and a really nice cocktail menu too, with lots of non-alcoholic novelty drinks. The Angus beef sliders with beer and cheese sauce might be the most popular dish at $22, but our favorite is the pork and Brussels sprout banh mi sandwich at $15. There's a tuna pokey rice bowl that's fresh and yummy, and if you're wanting a serious snack, there are the barbacoa or lobster nachos, which have tons of flavor. The side here are potato skins, and they do it right, something not every Disneyland kitchen manages to do. Over amongst the midway at the pier is a not-so-hidden gem, Poultry Palace, which has a bunch of Disneyland go-to snacks. You can get the chimichanga here, as well as the corn and the cob, and you can definitely make a meal out of those. But the signature dishes are the poultry. You can get fried chicken legs done in a shake and bake style, almost like panko crumbs. For $10.99, you can get a box with three legs and some coleslaw. Next door is Angry Dogs, themed to the cute but <laughs> furious anger from Pixar's Inside Out. And you can get an Angry Dog, a spicy hot dog for $9, or a regular hot dog called a slightly annoyed dog for $8. They're good hot dogs, though a bit smaller than what you're going to get at award wieners across the park. Around the other side of Paradise Bay, the only place to grab a full meal that's open is the Corn Dog Castle. It offers regular corn dogs, spicy corn dogs, and cheese on a stick for nine to ten dollars. They're served with a mandarin orange and a bag of chips, and really hit the spot. Still listed on the website, but temporarily closed, is Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Now we think it's going to open once the DCA Food and Wine Festival starts to wrap up, and Disney has more staff to dedicate to it. As the name suggests, you can get pizza slices here. Usually, there's three or four choices, and pasta. We like this place. The food is just okay. We prefer the salads and pasta over the pizza, but it's a fun visit because of the location. It's often not crowded and it's big. There's a ton of shaded, charming seating, and it has some of the best restrooms in the park nearby. We hope it reopens soon. The dining destination of Grizzly Peak and Grizzly Peak Airfield, I still think of as Condor Flats, is the Smoke Jumpers Grill. We always have a great meal here. It's a go-to of ours. And the theming of the place is really well done. There's lots of details that you don't expect in every little corner. It usually has burgers. Right now, a bacon cheeseburger for $13.99 and an Impossible Burger for $12.79. The chicken sandwich on the featured menu looks good, coming with chipotle sauce and a green roasted chile. Smoke Jumpers also has yummy waffle-cut french fries and onion rings that we crave. And if you're looking for chicken tenders or a burger for your kiddo, look no further. Well, that's it for quick service dining locations inside Disney California Adventure. Though don't forget that DCA has the Grand Californian Hotel really, really close, and they always have a food festival going with extra quick service dining kiosks for many months out of the year. But that, my friends, is going to have to wait for another video. Thanks for joining us as we checked out the places that most of us are going to eat while visiting in 2022. We have lots more to come. If you're enjoying this, let us know, and we'll tackle downtown Disney and the hotels. But for now, See you real soon, Mouseketeers. See you real soon.